Hi Matthews Superstars, guess what? We're back with another few chapters of the mouse and the motorcycle. <laughs> Let's find out what our favorite little mouse Ralph has been up to, shall we? Chapter three, trapped. Remember when we left Ralph last time, he was stuck in that wastebasket? Well, let's find out what happens. Even though Ralph woke up feeling sick and dizzy, his first thought was of the motorcycle. He hoped it was not broken. He sat there at the bottom of the wastebasket until the whirly feeling in his head stopped and he was able slowly and carefully to stand up. He stretched each aching muscle and felt each of his four legs to make certain it was not broken. When Ralph was sure that he was battered but intact, he examined the motorcycle. He set it upright and rolled it backward and forward to make sure the wheel still worked. One handlebar was bent and some paint had chipped off the rear fender, but everything else seemed all right. Ralph hoped so, but there was no way he could figure out until he figured out how to start the engine. Now he ached too much to even try. Wearily, Ralph dragged himself over to the wall of his metal prison and sat down beside the apple core to rest his aching body. He leaned back against the side of the waste paper basket, closed his eyes, and thought about his Uncle Victor. Poor, nearsighted Uncle Victor. He, too, had landed in a metal waste basket, jumping there quite by mistake. Unable to climb the sides, he had been trapped until the mate came and emptied him out with the trash. No one knew for sure what had happened to Uncle Victor, but it was known that trash in the hotel was emptied in the incinerator. Do you guys know what an incinerator is? It is a place in like large buildings, like hotels and businesses, where they actually burn the trash. So that's why Ralph and his family were very scared about waste baskets. Ralph felt sad and remorseful, thinking about his Uncle Victor getting dumped out with the trash. His mother had been bright after all. His poor mother, gathering crumbs for his little brothers and sisters, while he, selfish mouse that he was, sat trapped in a metal prison from which the only escape was to be thrown away like an old gum wrapper. Ralph thought sadly of his comfortable home in the mouse hole. It was a good home, untidy, but comfortable. The children who stayed in room 215 usually left a good supply of crumbs behind, and there was always water from the shirt still hung to drip dry beside the wash basin. It should have been enough. He should have been content to stay home without venturing out in the world looking for speed and excitement. Outside in the hall, Ralph heard footsteps and Matt, the bellboy, saying, These new people in 215 and 216 somehow got the idea there are mice in the hotel. I just opened the window and told them the management wouldn't stand for it. Ralph heard a delighted laugh from the second floor maid, a college girl who was working for the summer season. Mice are adorable, but just the same, I hope I never find any in the rooms. I'm afraid of them. There were two kinds of employees at the Mountain View Inn. The regulars, none of them young, and the summer help, who were college students working during the tourist season. If you don't like mice, you better stay away from that knot hole under the window in room 215, advised Matt. Here's a picture of Ralph's uncle getting thrown out with the trash. The sound of voices was so close, it made Ralph more eager than ever to escape. No, he shouted, his voice echoing in the metal chamber. I am won't have it. I'm too young to be dumped out with the trash. In spite of his aches, he jumped to his feet, ran across the wastebasket floor, and leaped against the wall only to fall back in a sorry heap. He rose, backed off, and tried again. There he was on the floor of the wastebasket a second time. It was useless, utterly useless. He did not have the strength to tip over the wastebasket. Ralph was not a mouse to give up easily. He considered the problem a moment before he rolled the motorcycle over to the wall of the wastebasket. Then he seized the apple core by the stem and dragged it over to the motorcycle. By putting his shoulder under the stem end, he managed to raise the core until it was standing on its blossom end, but when he put his front paws around it and tried to lift it, he found he could not. The core was too heavy to lift up on the seat of the motorcycle. Ralph was disappointed, 
But when he stopped to think it over, he saw that even if he could manage to get the apple core on top of the motorcycle, it still would not be high enough to allow him to climb out of the wastebasket. Bruised and defeated, Ralph dropped the core and decided he might as well be thrown out with the trash on a full stomach rather than an empty one. He took a bite of apple and felt a little better. It was the best food he'd eaten for several days, juicy and full of flavor and much better than the damp was why back crumbs the last guests had left behind. He took several more bites and settled down to a hearty meal, saving the seeds for dessert. Two ant scouts appeared on the rim of the wastebasket. Go away, said Ralph, crossly, because he did not like to eat food crawling with ants and because it embarrassed him to be seen in such a predicament. The ants left as silently as they had come. When Ralph had eaten his fill of the apple, he curled up beside the core. He only hoped that someone might happen to drop a Kleenex over him. It was bad enough to be carried to one's doom in a wastebasket, but to be carried to one's doom by a shrieking maid was unthinkable. Here's a picture of Ralph. And what he thought was, see, a shrieking maid. There was one tiny ray of hope. If someone did happen to drop a Kleenex over him, he just might have had a chance to jump and run when the maid tipped the basket out to empty it. The thought that the boy was sure to miss his motorcycle and start looking for it kept Ralph tossing and turning behind the apple core until stuffed and exhausted, he finally fell asleep. Chapter 4, Keith. Ralph did not know how much time had passed before he was awakened by the lamp on the bedside table shining down on him. He squeezed himself into the tiniest possible ball, wrapped his tail around his body, and tried to make himself as thin as the apple core. My motorcycle, shouted the boy the very first thing. Someone stole my motorcycle. Uh-oh, thought Ralph. It won't be long now. Nobody stole your motorcycle, answered the boy's mother from 216. It's around here someplace. You just mislaid it. You can find it in the morning. You'd better get ready for bed now. No, I didn't mislead it, said the boy. I put it right here on the table beside my sports car. You'll find it someplace, said his mother, not much interested. Boys were always losing things. While Ralph cowered behind the apple core, Keith opened the door of his bedside table and slammed it shut. He jerked back the bedspread, yanked the pillows off the bed, and threw them back. Then he got down on his hands and knees and looked under the bed and the table. Ralph wrapped his tail more tightly around his body. Here it comes, he thought. The boy's face appeared in the opening of the top of the wastebasket. Ralph's heart raced like a motor. Ha, huh, said the boy to himself. Here it is. I wonder how it got here. His hand came down into the wastebasket to seize the motorcycle and lift it out. Still leaning over the wastebasket, he examined the bent handlebar and the chip paint. That's funny, he remarked aloud. It must have rolled off, but I don't see how it could. The boy did the natural thing for a boy to do. He looked into the wastebasket again. Ralph closed both of his eyes tight and waited. He wished he had not eaten so much of the apple core. If he had not been so greedy, the core would have been thicker and he would have been thinner. Hey, whispered the boy, obviously, very much surprised. How did you get in here? He was careful to keep his voice lower than the sound of the breezes in the pines outside the window. Ralph did not move. He was grateful to the boy for not touching the apple core, even though it was really no protection at all. Psst, whispered the boy. Are you asleep? Still, Ralph remained motionless, except for a slight quiver of his whiskers, which he was unable to control. The boy was silent, but the mouse could feel the rhythmic drifts of his breathing. The boy must be thinking, but what was he thinking? That's what was worrying Ralph. No, said the boy to himself. No, it couldn't be. Couldn't be what, wondered Ralph, who was beginning to feel cramped from the crouching behind the apple core. Hey, wake up, whispered the boy. That was the last thing Ralph wanted to do. Come on, pleaded the boy. I won't hurt you. Ralph considered. After all, what did he have to lose? If he stayed in the wastebasket, he was almost certain to get dumped into the incinerator. He might as well come out from behind the core. If he did, he might find some opportunity to escape. Cautiously, he moved his head from his paws and opened one eye. The boy was smiling down at him. Encouraged, Ralph opened the other eye and lifted his head. That's the stuff, encouraged the boy. Now come on, tell me, did you or didn't you ride my motorcycle off the bedside table? This took Ralph by surprise. He had not expected the boy to guess what happened. Well, yes, I guess you might say I did, confessed Ralph, rubbing his aching muscles. I thought so. Neither the mouse nor the boy was the least bit surprised that each could understand each other. Two creatures who shared a love of motorcycles naturally spoke the same language. 
That must have been some accident. Did it hurt much? Oh, some, answered Ralph with a display of bravado. Anyway, I didn't exactly ride it. I really coasted off. The telephone rang and startled me. Now, how about getting me out of here? Just a minute, said the boy. How did you get up here in the first place? Climbed, stupid, on the telephone cord. Ralph instantly regretted his rudeness. He had better watch his tongue if he expected any help in escaping from the wastebasket. Oh, of course, said the boy apologetically. I should have thought of that myself. At that moment, there came a quick knock on the door to the room 215 and the rattle of a key. Help, cried Ralph. The maid, don't let her see me. Before the boy could do anything, the maid burst into the room. Oh, excuse me. She seemed surprised to see a boy kneeling by the wastebasket. I've come to turn down your bed. That's all right, said the boy quickly. I can do it myself. Thanks anyway. Thank you, said the maid, backing out of the room. Ralph knew she was not anxious to waste time turning down the bed. As soon as she finished her duties, she was going out to the parking lot to meet a bus boy, a college boy, whose job was clearing tables in the dining room. Phew, that was close. The boy seemed every bit as relieved as Ralph. I'll say, agreed the mouse. Keith, called his mother from room 216. Are you getting ready for bed? Sort of, answered Keith. You better come out in our bathroom and take a bath, said his mother. Aw, gee, Mom, do I gotta, said Keith. Yes, you do, said his father. And don't forget to brush your teeth, said his mother. I won't, promised Keith. Then he whispered to Ralph. You just lie low. I'll hurry and take a bath and get into bed and turn out the lights. And after Mom comes and kisses me goodnight, we can talk some more. Lie low, indeed. Ralph was indignant. He couldn't lie much lower if he wanted to, and he certainly did not want to sit around waiting to talk. He wanted to get out of the wastebasket. Once he was out, he would see about talking, but not before. Ralph could hear the boy splashing in 2016's bathtub and then hastily brushing his teeth in 215's wash basin. After this, there was the sound of a suitcase being opened and clothes dropped on the floor. The boy hopped into bed, and to Ralph's relief, the light was turned out. In a moment, Mrs. Gridley came in to kiss her son goodnight. Night, Mom, said the boy, sounding as if he were already drowsy. Good night, Keith, said his mother. It looks as if we're going to have to stay here for a few days. Your father refuses to budge. That's okay, muttered Keith, giving the impression he was almost asleep. Good boy, said his mother. You're a good sport. Good night, son, said the boy's father from the doorway between the two rooms. Keith did not answer. Instead, he breathed slowly and deeply, and as Ralph thought, a bit too noisily. There was no sense in overdoing this. As soon as all was quiet in the next room, the boy swung his legs out of bed, fumbled around his suitcase, and shone a flashlight into the wastebasket. Almost blinded by the unexpected light, Ralph held his paws over his eyes. Hey, cut that out! He could not remember to be polite. Oh, sorry! The boy laid the flashlight on the bed where the beam shone across the wastebasket rather than into it. That's better, said Ralph. Now, how about getting me out of here? As an afterthought, he added, please... I am going to stop right there. We're almost done with this chapter. What do you guys think? Do you think the boy is going to release Ralph? Do you think Keith, the boy, is going to release Ralph from his waste paper basket prison? <laughs> do you think Ralph's going to go back to riding a motorcycle? I don't know. We'll continue next week. And in the meantime, superstars, stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time. Bye.